Hi, I'm Logan Ryder. I'm an associate professor of art at Swarthmore College. And I thought today I would talk to you about a couple of drawing exercises you can do at home, regardless of your level of experience or confidence with drawing. In order to really see something, you, you have to forego any assumed knowledge, any preconceived ideas about the object you're looking at, no matter how familiar this object is. A classic exercise that's often misunderstood is the continuous blind contour. So this, this exercise is very simple. The rules and parameters are easy to understand and the tools are readily available. So all you need is a pen and a piece of paper and a subject to look at. So in this case, I'm gonna use my hand. Um, when I'm looking at my hand, I'm only looking at my hand. I'm not looking at the paper I'm drawing on. Your hand should be traveling extremely slow because your eye should be traveling extremely slow. If your eye moves too quickly or lapses or disconnects with the relationship between your hand, you're gonna wind up with a complete mess. Continuous blind contour drawing really illustrates how drawing becomes central to the act of seeing. Most drawing is an act of memory. Continuous blind contour nearly eliminates memory because your eye always stays fixated on your subject rather than your drawing. So there's nothing lost in transmission. So you might have wound up with some kind of elegant spaghetti strewn across your paper, and that's fine. It's kind of to be expected if you're just starting this kind of drawing. One of the things to think about is as you do this in progression, you'll realize that the more attention you have, the quieter the space, the less distraction around you, your phone's off, there's no one talking to you, uh, you'll, you'll be able to perform better in this drawing. So I really encourage you to go to a quiet space, to kind of a meditative space and focus with all your willpower on just studying the object at hand and avoid looking at the drawing. Now I wanna talk about something that's much more aligned with the way we see, which is value-based. So we see in terms of relative lightness and darkness of things. Some of us have the added benefit, or most of us, of having good color vision. But it's still, that can be reduced down to value relationships. So how light or how dark a shape is, is really how we process imagery. This Seurat drawing is kind of a quintessential example of his ability to translate value through a simple crayon. So the white you're seeing is actually the white of the paper. Everything else is a grease crayon that's been transferred onto the paper. So the subject of this drawing is really light as much as it's a portrait. So for our second drawing assignment, which is really gonna target value, we're gonna use dots. So let's take a, a, a wonderful tool to make lines and let's only make dots. It sounds a little crazy. It's very slow. It can be tedious if you're not in the right mindset. But try to focus on only using the point of your pen to create a matrix of dots that either loosens in order to create a lighter value using the white of the page, or darkens in order to control a darker value. As you're drawing, look for moments where two or more values become so similar that you can't distinguish between the two. These are moments that we call open edge. So these moments allow for your eye to pass seamlessly between objects, and they contrast obviously with what we call closed edge. So closed edge is when you have two values that are much further apart than they are similar. Another great example of value control, this time in painting, is a painter named Giorgio Morandi. So this is a Morandi still life, uh, and it's pretty apparent, I think, to everyone, when you look at this image, what's happening with edge control. So the closed edge, would be the edge along the right side of that still life object, the funnel that's upside down on top of a can with a vase in front. But really notice what's happening on the left side of the painting. That the background, when you squint, is nearly the same value as the top of the can. Now notice how those values, when they become similar, allow your eye to pass seamlessly from the background, the thing that's furthest in the back of the painting that's being described, to the foreground, the thing in the very front. So back to our dot drawing. An effective trick to help see value is to actually squint at the object you're looking at. Edwin Dickinson, who was a painter, used to refer to this as the profound squint. So by squinting, you're actually eliminating a lot of smaller information, more detailed information, and it allows you to see the true nature of your order of value from light to dark and whatever you're looking at. 
I hope you all consider drawing to be a part of your daily life. I know that's something probably a stretch, but I would bet it's the first motor skill you all acquired. And it's probably, unfortunately, the first one you all gave up uh, because of some idea about talent, which is a real, real unfortunate thing. So drawing doesn't take any special talents. Um, drawing also doesn't have to become art. Drawing can be part of your every day. And uh, I think at the heart of it, the simplest way to understand it is it's like practice. So the more you do it, the better off you're gonna be uh, at it and the more comfortable you'll be doing it. And I hope you all enjoy drawing. Thanks.